When you were a kid, did you ever try to dig a really deep hole? Maybe you try to dig to the other side of the planet while you were playing at the beach or in a sand pit? Well, from the 1950s to 70s, teams of scientists from the United States and Soviet Union attempted to do just that. Dig a hole. Not quite to the other side of the planet, but as far down as humanly possible. Let's take a deep dive into the story about the world's deepest hole. You're probably familiar with the space race. It was the height of the Cold War and the United States and Soviet Union were trying to one-up each other in space exploration. Each side hit various metagalactic milestones in a short period of time. In 1957, the Soviets sent Sputnik, the world's first man-made satellite, into space. The following year, NASA was born and the US launched their own satellite into space. In April 1961, Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to journey into outer space. In May that same year, President John F. Kennedy declared that the US would land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. In July 1969, Neil Armstrong effectively won the space race for the United States when he became the first man on the moon. But did you know that the US and Soviet Union were in another race? heading in the opposite direction to an equally unknown frontier, down deep into the earth. Most of the deep holes that humans dig are for extracting resources, but this competition was not in search of oil or metals or diamonds. Both sides were drilling in the name of pure science. They wanted to see firsthand the composition of the earth's top layer, the crust, and better understand seismic activity like earthquakes. Obtaining samples from deep within the Earth could also provide clues as to how our planet evolved, how life formed, and even shed a light on some of the universe's secrets. Even today, we don't really know how the Earth's layers transition and interact. Studies have been limited to observations taken from the surface. Humans have never seen firsthand what happens at the boundary between the crust and the next layer down, the mantle. This mysterious boundary is called the Moho Discontinuity, and being able to bore down to it would literally be groundbreaking in geosciences. Americans took the first crack at it in 1958. A group of eccentric geologists and oceanographers from the American Miscellaneous Society launched Project Mohole. The goal was to drill down to the Moho Discontinuity from the ocean floor where the Earth's crust is thinner. A former Navy barge was converted to a drill ship and positioned in the Pacific Ocean off Guadalupe Island, Mexico. By March 1961, they had managed to drill just over three kilometers down. The project was defunded in 1966 before it got anywhere near the mantle, but it was still considered to be a huge achievement in engineering and pioneering deep sea oil drilling technologies that are still used today. Several other American deep sea drilling projects followed. But in 1974, a new record for the world's deepest hole was set by the Lone Star Producing Company. They drilled an oil exploratory hole 9.6 kilometers deep in Oklahoma and named it Bertha Rogers. Meanwhile, the Soviets were underway with their own hole. In 1963, the USSR's Interdepartmental Scientific Council launched their newest program, Study of the Earth's Interior and Super Deep Drilling. The American project Mohol had been marred by both financial and political controversy from the very start, so the Soviets decided to do things differently. They enlisted a much larger and more dedicated team of 200 scientists and specialists to work on the program. They opted to drill on land instead of the ocean floor. The Soviets chose the Kola Peninsula as their drill site, located in far northwest Russia, deep in the Arctic Circle near the Norwegian border. The landscape up there is rough and desolate, and the closest town, Zapoliani, 14 kilometers away, was inhabited mostly by workers at the nickel processing plant. The location was chosen as the land was made of Precambrian granites, formed in the age of early life, the earliest period in Earth's history. From 1970 to 1992, the Kola Super Deep Borehole was created, and it remains the world's deepest hole to this day. It's only 23 centimeters in diameter, but extends 12,262 meters into the earth. It's deeper than the Mariana Trench, deeper than Mount Everest is tall, or the Burj Khalifa stacked up 15 times. 
Before any drilling could begin, the Soviets spent five years designing the equipment and constructing the base which included a 60 meter tall tower. Drilling commenced in May 1970 using a modified existing oil drill rig called Earl Mash 4E. The goal was to eventually reach the Earth's mantle about 40 kilometers down. In the first four years, the Soviets managed to bore to a depth of 7,263 meters. Drilling then paused for a year, while the rig was dismantled and the new, purpose-built Ural Mash 15,000 was installed. It was named after the target depth of 15,000 meters. This drill would need to withstand immense pressure and heat, as well as much harder and denser rock. Uralmash, a Russian heavy machinery manufacturer, created a strong downhole motor made of a hard alloy for the rock cutting drill bit and dubbed it Turbo Drill. It was attached to a hollow stem made of a lightweight aluminium alloy and featured a barrel that could transport core samples all the way up to the surface. As the drill burrowed deeper down, additional pieces of the stem would be added to the top. Only the drill bit could rotate so a special pressurized drilling mud was pumped down to act as a lubricant and force the drill to spin. Each cutting edge turbo drill bit could last about 4 hours and bore 7 to 10 meters. It would have to be pulled up often, as it was difficult to make it go straight down. Plus, the stem would break due to the pressure and weight of the core samples. On two occasions, the stem got twisted and broke off and had to be left in the ground so drilling would have to resume off a branch from the main hole. The main hole was called SG3, and in total it had 12 branch offs, but most of them were under 5 kilometers long and were for extracting extra core samples. Towards the end of the Kola project, the drill and its stem weighed over 200 tons, and it took 21 hours to transport a core sample up the 12 kilometers to the surface. Measuring instruments had to be specially engineered as well, because the pressure was so intense that deep in the ground, rock samples would deform by the time they reached the surface, similar to how deep sea creatures deform when brought up to the surface. The Soviets developed tools that could take physical measurements of samples while at the bottom of the borehole. So I'm not going to pretend to be a geology expert, but the Kola scientists apparently learned a lot about the Earth's crust. Long-standing beliefs about the rock layers were disproved, and plenty of unexpected discoveries were made. At the time, scientists believed in the existence of the Conrad discontinuity, that beneath a 3 to 6 km layer of granite, there would be a transition to basalt where seismic waves travel faster. However, all they found was granite extending past the 12 km point. What geologists had detected and believed was basalt was actually a metamorphic change in the granite. In other words, the granite's properties had transformed due to the intense heat and pressure. They were also surprised to find water 5 kilometers down. When Soviet scientists announced this amazing finding, Western scientists were skeptical. They didn't believe that water could reach that far down, and they were right. The water was actually believed to be hydrogen and oxygen atoms squeezed out of the rock by the intense pressure. It then gets trapped in the cracks and never reaches the surface. But most astonishing was the discovery of biological activity in 2 billion year old rocks. For context, planet Earth itself is estimated to be around 4.5 billion years old. At 7 kilometers deep, microscopic fossils of 24 different species of single cell plankton were found. They weren't encased in limestone or silica like most fossils but organic compounds of carbon and nitrogen that had somehow withstood the intense pressure and high temperatures of their environment. It was these extreme conditions that would eventually bring an end to the drilling. As the Ural Mash 15,000 bore deeper into the ground, the temperatures increased at a much faster rate than anticipated. Instead of the estimated 100 degrees Celsius, it reached almost double that at 180 degrees Celsius 12 kilometers down. The rock was also almost more like a liquid than a solid at that depth. It was described as behaving like plastic. The borehole would start to level out and close up every time the drill bit was pulled up, undoing all progress. They tried to combat the heat by refrigerating the drilling mud before pumping it down, but it had no effect. 
drilling slowed down in 1990 due to the unexpectedly high temperatures. Funding for the project also dried up around this time, amid the collapsing Soviet Union. In 1992, drilling officially stopped. The site was intended to be converted into a research facility, but those plans evaporated due to lack of funding. By 1995, all work had ceased and the borehole was abandoned entirely. In 2005, the Kola Super Deep borehole was sealed off and bolted shut. There are unverified reports that it may have been filled with concrete. All that's left of this incredible feat of engineering is the crumbling remains of the abandoned site. The tower is gone, but in the center of it all is a rusty disc about the size of a dinner plate that covers one of the most important clues we've ever unearthed about the universe's secrets. The ruins are hard to access, but that hasn't stopped the many visitors who have made the pilgrimage to see what the locals have dubbed the entrance to hell. Even though the borehole is inaccessible now, its core samples are still being studied by scientists. It took 22 years to drill 12 kilometers down into the earth, and we still only got 0.2% of the way to the center of the planet. The Kola Super Deep Borehole is still the deepest artificial hole in the world in terms of vertical depth today, but it lost its record as the longest hole in 2008 to Mursk's Al Shayin oil well in Qatar. Currently, the longest hole is Exxon Z44 Shavo well in Russia at 12,376 meters long, only 114 meters longer than the Kola borehole. It's kind of crazy to think that hundreds of humans have been to space since the moon landing, yet this hole from the 70s is still the furthest down we can go until major technological advancements are made. That being said, the mission to the mantle is still ongoing. In 2005, the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology, JAMSTEC, completed building Chikyu, the world's first scientific research vessel equipped with deep sea drilling technology. Chikyu, essentially a state-of-the-art floating lab, has successfully drilled three kilometers down through the ocean floor, but its real challenge is still in the works. The $1 billion project, M2M, which stands for Moho to Mantle, aims to finally bore a six kilometer long hole from the ocean floor and reach the Earth's mantle, but it has yet to get underway. In June 2023, China began their foray into deep Earth exploration with the announcement of a 2,000 ton drilling rig designed to withstand temperatures of up to 200 degrees Celsius. The project is being led by the China National Petroleum Corporation, the country's leading oil and gas producer but the focus will be on scientific research. The plan is to drill to a depth of 11,100 meters in 457 days, still over 1,100 meters off Kohler's record. I hope you enjoyed going down this deep rabbit hole as much as I did. Thanks for subscribing and consider joining our Patreon for early access to content.